Hello everyone, welcome to Snap Take. This is Glazer Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone, and today we're doing something extremely different from what we usually do here. What we're going to do is I'm going to give you all the tools you need if you're a Series 3 and complete player to target a deck exactly what cards you're looking for in order to build that deck in the most efficient and effective way possible. This doubles as basically a guide to every deck type in the game, and we're going to finish it up with the top 10 series three cards in Marvel Snap to target with your free spot. I hope that this is useful for um, everyone because you're going to get a really good overview of the most important cards for basically every archetype that's playable in the game right now, which should be useful to all players. But in addition to that, if you are still building your collection, if you are still trying to build the best decks, this should be a guide for how to most effectively do so. Before we get started, though, I'd like to ask you to subscribe every single week down the channel. You'll know today is Sunday. Every single week down the channel, we give you at least two brand new decks that keep you ahead of the meta. These are the best decks that perform by the stats. They get infinite. They get infinity. Get those. They get those infinity borders. They are absolutely worth playing. In addition, every month here on the channel, we do the biggest giveaway in all of Marvel Snap. I'm going to take you through that very quickly because this video is your last chance to enter for the month of October for the Elsa Bloodstone Season Pass. You can enter on Marvel Snap Zone. You will see if you click the Articles tab on Marvel Snap Zone, there is a giveaway. All you have to do is click it, follow the steps, and you can win one of five Elsa Season Passes. You can also win one of five from checking out our Twitter. Both the link to Marvel Snap Zone and the Twitter can be found in the description to this video. And you can also just sub to this channel. Every video um, from last Monday to this video right now is a chance to give away. All you have to do is be subbed and comment on any of those videos. Winners will be announced in tomorrow morning's video. All right, so you are trying to progress through Series 3 and you want to be competitive with Marvel Snap. What do you do? First, look at your collection and see what cards you have. Um, if you have synced your collection with Marvel Snap Zone, that's really easy. You want to look at what Series 3 cards you already have. You've probably unlocked quite a few. They've probably put you on the path to specific decks. It is possible, however, to get unlucky and get not much that is very good. It's really unfortunate when that happens, but it's a thing. You should also look at the archetypes of the game to see what cards you need. That's basically what this slideshow is for. You need to figure out what series four and five cards you have versus not. The spotlight cash system means you likely have a few. It used to be a safe assumption that people had almost no series four and five cards, but the spotlight cash system has saved that, um, and it makes it harder to offer recommendations because if you have, for example, Thanos versus if you have um, Alioth, that's going to change the type of deck you should be building toward. And once you've looked at all of that stuff, you can pick your card. Let's get started with the first archetype. These are alphabetized, and I will basically be highlighting them and telling you what I suggest. All right, so you want to build a bounce deck. Um, you need a lot of series four and five cards for bounce. You need at least three to make it really good, although you can just buy Elsa to probably um, help out. You're going to need Kitty Pride, you're going to need Mobius, and you're going to need Hit Monkey. Kitty is the key to bounce at the early games. Excuse me. And Hitmonkey is the key to closing games with Bounce. Elsa should make Kitty really good again, um, so you're going to need her. And Mobius will prevent Wave from basically just straight up ending your game, make it so you have no chance. Jeff is good here, but not a necessity. If you have those cards, Bounce is not that hard to put together. You're really going to need Beast, Bast, and Mysterio. That's only three Series 3 cards, but three Series 4 or 5 and three Series 3 is a big ask. I recognize that. Um, we also don't know necessarily how good Bounce is going to be. It has been out of the meta for quite a while. It threatened to come back, but Kitty was nerfed. Does Elsa put it right back where it was? It is honestly, at this exact moment, impossible to know that. I don't suggest you start building Bounce, at least as of this minute. If you want to build a Darkhawk deck, Darkhawk decks are not where the meta is right now. You need Darkhawk, Mobius, Zabu, and Iron Lad. Those are almost non-negotiables. Luckily, three of them are Series 4, but Iron Lad is Series 5 and missing in um, spotlights. You also very likely need either Ravona or Stature. Um, you need Rock Slide without any question if you're going to play a Darkhawk deck. Um, you can do with either Mystique. You can do with Mystique if you have Ravona. 
um, Doom if you have Ladder Stature, if you have, sorry, Black Bolt if you have Stature, uh, any of those work, but this is not an archetype where it seems like currently it is really worth going after, especially given the high cost of all these other cards. If you happen to have them, like if for whatever reason you have Darkhawks, Mobius, and Zabu, and then you like um, open, there's worse things to do than opening Rock Slide, right? Don't suggest it, but it's not where the meta is. If you want to build a destroy deck, um, you need Null or Alioth. They don't go in the same deck, generally speaking, but you need Null or Alioth. X23 really helps, and tomorrow we're doing our Spotlight Cash Guide. X23 will be in that guide. Um, Mobius might or might not go here, but I don't really think you play Mobius and Destroy as a general rule. Um, that's really low, Series 4 or 5. Like, Null is in Spotlight Caches all the time for some reason. If you happen to have X23 and Alioth, you can build one of these decks. Um, I don't think they're super meta, but like you're a death and a venom from a really good deck. You need death and venom. I don't think you can really bother playing these if you don't have death and venom. I think venom is a little more important because venom opens up more things. Um, you need a third destroy, like a third destroy all card, and venom gives you that um, to go with your earlier series carnage and deathlock. Death gets really cheap, and that's obviously really good. That's why you might want Mobius in the deck, because if they have Mobius, your death not getting cheaper makes it useless. Um, X23 helps because you almost always want Deadpool in these decks, and at the end of the game, being able to play Deadpool and Null, or Deadpool and Alioth, is stellar, and that's how you win. If you're running Mobius, you run Wave. If Mobius and Wave, you also want Doom. This is something to build to. This is the best we've seen so far as far as what you'd build to. It's not necessarily something I would go after right away, but I know a lot of people really like Destroy, and this works. And again, just for the record, um, there are versions of this that run Deadpool and don't bother with Death. Um, There are versions of this that run Death and don't bother with Deadpool. If you have Mobius, I suggest going after a Death version. If you don't have Mobius, go after a Deadpool version. Next up... Um, you want to build a destroyer deck. No one really wants to build a destroyer deck, I feel like. But you can build a destroyer deck with just, and I wrote destroy, that's funny. All right, you can build a destroyer deck with just destroyer. If you have destroyer, you play a bunch of ongoing cards, and you play spectrum, and then you have a destroyer deck. That's really all there is to it. It's a bunch of ongoing cards, Professor X, Spectrum, and Destroyer, and it's playable. If you want the best versions of the deck, you're going to have to play um, Daredevil, along with like Orca and the Goblins, and a Tuma really helps because you can play a Tuma in a lane and then you can pr drop Professor X on it, Professor X on it, or you can play a Tuma into an armor lane and then it's just 4 of 10 is a lot of power. Um, these are all good cards and good plays. Destroyer is surprisingly effective into the meta basically at all times. It only wants to play one card a turn, so it's really hard to disrupt it. Um, it puts a lot of power down. It's worth looking into especially if like you're real real early in series three um and you just like see destroyer you can grab destroyer play that for a month and be totally fine you're gonna win games you could probably hit infinite it'll it works next up we have our discard deck um this is the first one that i highly highly recommend i think because all you really need from series four is modok um you're set Almost everything you want for this deck is early series. You want Dracula, you want Colleen Wing. That's kind of it. You'll occasionally run a Dakin and Silver Samurai or um, Absorbing Man if you're running those two. And But like you can replace Dakin and Silver Samurai just from Black Cat and Ghost Rider. I guess Ghost Rider would be another Series 3 card you could add here along if you're running Black Cat, but you could just run like Storm and be fine here. Um, Storm and Blade like and be fine here. That this is a near a near tier one deck. It's at worst tier two right now, and all you really need is Modok, Dracula, and Colleen to make it work. Means that I highly suggest if you're early in series three in pool three, that this is what you highlight. Dracula also opens up several other decks for you. Um, we're not going to talk about the. Um, zoo dump but if you're coming from series one or two you'll remember zoo decks there's versions of that deck that basically run dracula they empty their hand of everything but dracula um everything but one big one or two big cards at the end of the game think like infinite dracula discards like an infinite or a red skull or a destroyer at the end of the game and it becomes a four like 16 or 420 and then you just had a bunch of other cards because you dropped a bunch of ones right um that's still a real deck early in series three 
might be a real deck again, thanks to um, Elsa Bloodstone, and it's worth keeping an eye on. But, like, this is going to be good, and you should definitely check it out as one of the main options. Um, I highlighted four as main options, by the way. This is the first of them. I don't think this is as good of an option, but it's at least easy to get to. Um, you need High Evolutionary. Um, Nebula and Legion are good here, but you'll be okay if not. And Mobius is pretty nice. If you have High Evolutionary and Mobius, though, you could basically play this. Um, you need Mobius. The real My real fear here is that your opponent has Mobius, and then your She-Hulk doesn't get cheap. And then the deck doesn't really work. Along with, like, Legion running Magic, there is very little needed. But I feel like the meta has sort of evolved a little bit past this because Mobius punches She-Hulk right in the face. Like, if you have Mobius and they don't, you're going to win a lot of games with this. Otherwise, I feel like this is extremely, extremely counter counterable right now. There is always the standard High Evolutionary deck. This is the second thing I recommend. Um, You need... Oh, <laughs> You need High Evolutionary and Mobius. Nebula is nice, but not needed. Jeff is nice, but not needed. Alioth is nice, but you guessed it, not needed. You have Mobius, you have Evolutionary, you'll be fine. What you want to do with this deck is you want to play basically a nice cheap High Evolutionary package. You're running a bunch of, you're running a few ones, things like Sunspot and Misty. Um, then you're running Armor, Cyclops, right? Like these are all cards you have that are made good by Evolutionary. And then on turn five, you drop Wave and Mobius. And turn six, you can drop Doom and Evolved Hulk. You need Wave and Doom, High Evolutionary, and Mobius. That's four cards. This is our second highly recommended. When I spoke to Safety Blade about this list, this was his number one pick. He was all about this one. Next up, we have our Hella deck. This is a nightmare to build, and I could not more strongly urge you away from trying to build a Hella deck. And I'm saying this, like, Hella beat me earlier today, but, like, it is wildly inconsistent. It flies in and out of the meta, and it's really hard to play. Um, there are no real Series 5, uh, 4 or 5, which means you should want it, but, like, you may want Silver Samurai, Living Tribunal, and then, like, you need a ton of Series 4, uh, 3 cards. You'll note this giant list, Lockjaw, Dracula, Moon Knight, Colleen, Gambit, Electro and Invisible Woman, and that's without even considering things like Magneto or, um, excuse me, Magneto or Death or, um, the name is escaping me, Giganto, that you might want to run in the deck as well to have big things for Hella to bring back. Given just how complicated all of this is, I think you should avoid Hella. Junk? I'm more and more sold on. I think we might be getting somewhere with this. Um, you're going to need Alioth and you really want Jeff because junk decks basically always end up running Professor X right now. Nebula fits really well here, but isn't needed. You do need Viper, Debris, and Hood for any halfway decent version of the deck, though. Um, basically, you just want to fill their side of the board with gunk. Hood as a 1-3 is amazing. You may, yeah, It's like a make-your-own-goblin with Viper, except you also got three on your side of the board. Debris fills them up, especially when they're not ready, if they're trying to go wide. I have a feeling that if everyone's running uh, Elsa for a little bit, this is going to be a good shout. You probably want Green Goblin or Hobgoblin, Sentry or Daredevil. You very rarely want all four of those, but you want two or three of them as you go. And remember, Marvel Snap Zone has builds for all of these decks. You literally go into their deck um, section and you type in Viper and... Um, you type in like Viper and Debris and then you like type in not Sentry, right? And then you see what comes up and you'll have a deck for this. I don't suggest this, but like you can do worse and it is like super fun. Um, One of the big downsides though is you absolutely have to have Alia. If you want to build a Lockjaw deck, um, this is actually really easy and this is like a sub high um recommendation because you really want Mobius because otherwise Wave ruins your life and sometimes you can play High Evolutionary. But besides that, it's just the six um, Series 3 cards you need. Sorry, the five Series 3 cards. I guess you don't technically need Magneto. I like Magneto a lot in Lockjaw decks. But you need Lockjaw, Wasp, Thor, Jane, and Doctor Doom. You need those five. But given that you only need Mobius, like, and if you accidentally open one or two of these, or you grabbed um, Last Season Pass, and you got um, Thor that way, and then you can just like buy Jane, this is a very real deck. Um... It's really weak to Shang-Chi, but like Shang has never been less in the meta than right now. What you basically do is you play Lockdraw and you play stuff on it and like as a parallel line, 
You've got Thor and Jane Foster. Jane gives you things to put into that lockjaw. Thor becomes a 10 in the process, and then other big things just happen because they pop out of lockjaw. It's pretty good to do, but like five series three cards is a lot for this type of deck. Next up, we have Loki. Um, look, Loki is the hardest thing to play in the game. Uh, like bar none, Lambie's damn near unbeatable with it, right? Like AM is climbing, like threatening rank one with it all the time. You have to be really good. But if you are really good and you have Loki, Mobius, Coulson, and Quinjet, you're good to go. So if you bought that season pass this month or won it because we gave away like a million of them, then this is a great deck to play. It's really like simple to get to. It is, however, really hard to pilot. Um, a lot of these decks use Snow Guard, Kitty Pride, or Legion, but you don't need any of those. Snow Guard could be Agent 13, which you have. Kitty can be like also Agent 13 or Cable, which you have. Legion can be Vision or Devil Dinosaur, which you have, etc. You can throw an Alioth or Jeff in there if you have them. But like, again, this can be built about a billion different ways. As long as you have Loki, Mobius, Coulson, and Quinjet, you should be, generally speaking, good to go for a Loki deck. If you want a move deck, this is a nightmare. I so don't suggest you go for this. Excuse me, go for this. You definitely want Mobius and Silk. You want but don't need Alioth, Jeff, and Legion. Um, but look at all the Series 3 cards. You want Spider-Man, Doom, Miles. Uh, a lot of people want Wave. Crossbones is in all the modern versions. The older versions ran Captain Marvel. Arrow is always great here. Um, it's a pain in the butt to get to. I think the move... Uh, Alioth decks might be the best deck in the game right now, but like if you're not spending, if you're early series three, unless you like just happen to have opened a bunch of these cards, I think it's a pass for now. So if you want a Patriot deck, this is another super highlight. This is our third, I believe, of the like super like, yeah, go for it. You'd really like to have Iron Lad and you'd really like to have Alioth. If you have those two cards or you're close to those two cards, you should be able to play it. In fact, you can play it without Iron Lad. You instead just run Mystique and Ultron. Um, you're going to want Patriot, Brood, and Absorbing Man. Brood and Absorbing Man is an incredibly powerful combo for this type of deck. You play it with Forge. You can play it with Elsa and just have an absolute ton of power. Um, and you're going to want Doom. So, like, you're looking for four cards here, but I think that they're relatively versatile cards. They get They open up a lot of decks for you. And because of that, I think that this is one of the decks to highlight, to really go after... Also, there's like always a good Patriot deck that's running most of these cards. Um, Patriot can always compete. And look, Patriot decks are never going to be super exciting, but this is about as fun as they get. Uh, Phoenix Force needs three series. Uh, well, one series five and two. Well, no, two series five because they don't do series drops, right? And one series four card. It's annoying. Um, these decks are awesome. You only need a few really um series four cards sorry series three cards to make them work cherry torch and venom is probably enough zola is nice but not like a necessity um these decks are super fun it's a shame that they're not more accessible and maybe one day they'll fix the bug in the phoenix force that lets it work properly with multiple men where both multiples can move after it but you know i'm not holding my breath ramp is not hard to make at all um Executive decision, this is now the fifth thing I strongly suggest because it's so easy to play and so easy to access. You need Alioth, like you really, really want Alioth. And then if you have Electro Wave and Doom, you're good to go. You'd like Leader or Arrow, right? But like you need three Series 3 cards and one Series 5 card. Iron Lad is really good here, and so is Jeff, and so is um, Nebula, but you don't actually need any of those for like actually competing and winning games. Um like Nightcrawler is fine there, and um, Psylocke is fine there, and Jubilee is fine there. So, like, there's plenty of ways to replace that as long as you have Alioth. Like, you already have Odin, so Alioth and Doom are set. Wave and Electro are the car other cards you really need. So, like, if this is another one, I highly recommend them because Ramp is really good. Um, you have Sandman from Series 2. And you add Sandman, you say a lot of opponents are going to try and be going wide, they're going to try and play a bunch of cards, and you just nope them, and then you eat their stuff with Alioth, or go too wide for them with Doom. You want to play a Sarah deck, um, Kitty, Mobius, and Hitmonkey, again, this is reasonably expensive, you need Sarah and Mysterio, I don't think this is super well positioned, I'm willing to um, hope that 
Elsa is going to prove me wrong. You're going to want to be running America in this because these decks now fall apart without Sarah, um, which is obviously annoying because Mobius will not let you Sarah, which means that like if they're Mobiusing on two, you better have Rogue. If they're Mobiusing on two or three, you better have Enchantress, that kind of thing. And that can really mess up your tempo, um, especially because you don't often want to play these cards otherwise. It's kind of rough. Um, a Shadow King will mess you up, so you really, really want to have Luke Cage. I think these decks are trying to do too much now. Uh, long has Sarah been like the thing I said most to go get because it's what I first went to get and got infinite with. But I think that its time has passed a little bit. So you want to build a surfer deck. You probably want Mobius because uh, if not, your Sarah is bad. But if you have Surfer, Brood, and Sarah, you're pretty much good to go. You can play a surfer deck. Um, you'd really like Absorbing Man for Brood. Um, and then Juggernaut, Spider, Maximus, Pliers, Rogue, just all the good three drops that are in Series 3. It gives you a nice clear line of progression. It's not something bad to go for, and it doesn't really have any high cost stuff, but it's also not something that like I would go wild for. I don't think it's super well positioned right now. This is the last of the super high recommendations for a deck. I think that Shuri is absolutely stellar right now. Um, we're talking Shuri Sauron here. You don't need any Series 4 cards. You can do a Kitty version with Elsa and Mobius, but, like, don't just do the Series 3 version. You need Shuri, Red Skull, Taskmaster, Sauron. Typhoid and Zero are nice, but if you have Shuri, Red Skull, Taskmaster, and Sauron, you have the deck. You already have armor. You're set. You um already have Lizard. You're set. You already have Ebony Maw. You're set, right? Like, all these cards that are really good that are Series 2 are made by Sauron. Or just good enough tempo that Sherry Red Skull Taskmaster does the job. Um, the deck also runs Vision, which is a Series 2 card, which is how you beat Alioth. But everything else just works fine. This deck is really, really, really good. This is probably my number one recommendation because all it really needs is four Series 3 cards. If you have those four Series 3 cards, you're good to go. You can probably be good to go without Sauron, fair warning. Um, but Sauron is like the number one win rate when played card in the game right now. So, I don't know. I feel like it's probably worth grabbing if you're going for this deck. It is the least important of the four, though. Like, all of the others are really high win rate, too. Um, Sauron just puts it over the top. And, like, without the other pieces, it doesn't work at all. Without Sauron, you're still just kind of fine. All right, we're almost done here. Next up, we have Thanos. I don't think Thanos is very good right now. You need uh, four series five cards right thanos alioth jeff and iron lad are all like necessary um and you but you need like nothing from series three you need psylocke and then like the other cards listed here are just nice so if you happen to have all four series five cards i don't know how you would but if you do and you're still series three incomplete all you need is psylocke and you're good to go here um yeah i don't think thanos is great but hey I could easily be wrong, and Thanos constantly comes back from the dead, so there's worse things to go after, and Psylocke is perfectly fine, if not actually good in a ramp deck. Top 10 cards to get from Series 3. Number 10 is Silver Surfer. Silver Surfer 3-2, when it gets played, it gives all your 3s plus 2. It's a build-around card. If you have Surfer, you know you can start getting Brood and a bunch of 3 drops, and then you're basically good to go. You can you have a deck basically as soon as you have Surfer and Brood. Because now you just want to go like, okay, Storm, and now you know you can start targeting Juggernaut. You can target all these other cards, and there's all these other good three drops like um, Mr. Fantastic that you can just put into decks that you already have that are great. I think Surfer is a tier lower than everything else on this list, but Surfer is still very, very good. It has its own deck. It goes really, really, really well in Patriot decks. It's a great card. Next up, we have Red Skull. Red Skull is a fantastic card. I wish it wasn't. I'm not thrilled that one of the best cards in the game is Big Mr. Nazi Man. Sorry, shifting my chair. Um, is Big Mr. Nazi Man. However, he is great, and he's basically a necessity for his style of deck. Um, he opens up a lot of stuff, right? Um, I don't know if you need him to run a Shuri deck, I feel like there's probably some other big stuff you can do, right? Like, even if it's not as big, because we know Vision works, and that's only a 16. So, like, Red Skull is how you take that over the top, but um, he's not high on the list for a reason. 
Next up, we have our friend the Patriot. Patriot is, um, how do I phrase this? Patriot is always good. It's the most consistent thing you can do in Marvel Snap to like win. Um, it, it was one of the first cards I got, and I just immediately climbed with it. It's almost idiot proof. You have cards that it works with, and a ton of cards you open make it better. Patriot is a tier up from the previous two, and an excellent card to target with your free pass, assuming it doesn't bore you to tears. I know a lot of people that are just like, but it's boring. Okay, well, I can't help you with that. Next up, we have Taskmaster. It's going to be a surprise to many to see Taskmaster higher than Red Skull and Patriot, but um, so Taskmaster offers other options, right? If you end up with, um, I don't know, let's say you end up with Black Knight, right? Like you end up with Black Cat um, and uh, Black Knight, right? Like now you can have uh, five, you can play a 4-9 um, Shard because Black Cat's going to start herself in a five, and a 5-9 paid Taskmaster. It's still ahead of curve, right? Like it's still ahead of rate. You can um, Shuri Vision and then Taskmaster and be totally fine. There are decks that run Deadpool that make Deadpool really big with things like um, Hulkbuster and Forge and then play last turn Deadpool and Taskmaster. And those are really good. And Taskmaster is really good to play behind armor. Like, right? So all these things, I think Taskmaster is one of the better cards to target. And it's especially good because it's so replaceable. There's no other card that does what Taskmaster does. Number six is Brood. Brood is, again, going to be a huge surprise, but I don't think Surfer works without Brood, and I don't think the best Patriot decks work without Brood. So Brood is here. Um, it might be a spot or two too high, but it's such a good card. It's so powerful and so versatile. Um, I assume that Brood is also going to be a necessity or at least an extremely powerful card once Elsa Bloodstone starts to become a major part of the meta because it lets you fill that location real fast and then start moving things in and out of that spot for a constant plus three. Um, it's, you have Forge, which it synergizes perfectly with. If you get Absorbing Men after, that synergizes perfectly, and then you have access to those decks. Brood is an exceedingly, exceedingly powerful card, and it is, like, when I opened Brood, I was like, what is this nonsense early in Series 3? And then, like, event, like Surfer came out a month later, I was like, oh, that's what this nonsense is. This is just one of the better cards in the game. Um, with Surfer, it's a 3-12, um, right? And it's a 310 with Patriot. Is it a 310 with Patriot? Yeah. 4 4, nope, 3 8 with Patriot. No, 310. I'm just really bad at math. Sorry. Doing this late at night. Please excuse me. But it's a 310 with uh, Patriot and a 312 with um, the Surfer. And if you combine both, wow. It, if you play Absorb Men after it, wow. Um, and that's all of that's not even considering the power of Elsa. So. I think Brood is nearly a must-have card. Um, it's like the best enabler, or one of the best enablers in the game. Next up, we have number five, Wave. Wave would have been number one or two a week ago. Wave is... Um, I hope you got Mobius. If you didn't get Mobius, please get that bundle. Um, Mobius and Wave basically just beats you if you don't have Mobius. But if you do have Mobius, then Wave is just kind of there. Even, like... It's a good card, right? Like, it's still powerful, and if you're early enough in, into Series 3 um, at a low MMR, then Wave is going to, like, win you an awful lot of games of Marvel Snap. Um, but when it's not, it's not. Next up, we have Venom. I love Venom here. Um, Venom enables Nimrod. It enables your Destroy packages to work. It enables your Phoenix packages to work. Um, it allows weird hybrid decks. It's that extra card you need to do things. Um, certain hot locations like cloning bats make Venom extraordinarily overpowered. I think Venom is an absolutely great card. I think he is the key to destroy that you don't have right now. Like, I think there's probably like six different ways to make reasonable destroy decks, but none of them work without Venom. Every other card in the package that is on Basically, every other card in the package period is replaceable, but Venom is not. Our honorable mentions are Lockjaw, Deadpool, and Electro. I think um, Deadpool, it was Deadpool or Death. I decided on Deadpool because I think, like, there's real power to um, the specimen-style Deadpool decks, 
where like you run America Travis with Deadpool and you say I'm gonna see Deadpool in the first three turns of the game and snap if I do and win because I can forge and Hulkbuster it, make it huge, and then go to town. Again, you need Venom for this to work at all. Um and then like that'll just win games a snap, right? Like you you have an alley off to finish with, or you have a uh, taskmaster, or you have a cheap death, or you have whatever, and then Deadpool wins games. Lockjaw is a build around. I need to see some actual results from Lockjaw on the current meta before I'm convinced he's great. And um, I think Electro is great. Electro Sandman is great, but you need a lot of other cards to make it work. Um, Electro maybe belongs on the list over Wave right now. I don't know if my brain is ready to go there yet, but like Wave has been the better card for so long, but maybe now it's Electro. All right, let's get to the top three, and then I'll let you get on your Wave for the day. Number three is Shuri. We've talked about Shuri eight times. Sure, um, Shuri Nimrod is part of the Phoenix Force 6. It's part of separate decks, but like right now, Phoenix Force is the best way to do that. Shuri, um, I mean like Shuri Vision, Shuri Kitty, Shuri Task, Shuri Red Skull. Like you can find other cards to Shuri if you want to and just win games of Marvel Snap. It's one of the best cards, one of the most overpowered cards. Doubling your power is really, really good. And it allows you to uh, do a lot of absolutely bonkers things. Like, you can still Shuri and um, drop a, uh, wow, it's gone, Hobgoblin, right? For a negative 16 on their side of the board. Now you've basically got, they've got to overcome 18 power to win. And you can do whatever the hell you want in another lane to steal it. I think Shuri is excellent. It's an absolutely crazy powerful card. So you should get Shuri as soon as possible. Like, the difference between... Here and here is a whole tier. This is our next tier. The top three are a tier to themselves. Next up, we have Dracula. Uh, people are going to be shocked to see Dracula. I'm like Dracula's biggest hater most of the time. Um, but like that discard apocalypse deck is legit. Like it's a real deck and it doesn't work without Dracula. Like Dracula is the card that makes the discard package work. Um, it also opens up various dump decks, various Sarah decks, various other things for you that won't exist otherwise it in and of itself like if you have dracula you can start playing disc and, and if sorry if you have dracula modok you can start playing discard go have fun like that's it like that's the whole thing if you have dracula modok you've got a deck because everything else that you really need is in an earlier series the so dracula is like an excellent get and i'm telling you i have a feeling that those um safety blade style dump decks where like you play basically a zoo package with dracula I think they're here. I think they're back. Get ready. Finally, we have Doom. Doom goes in everything. Doom is the best six cost in the game outside of, I guess, Alioth right now um, and America. But, like, we're talking about cards you play, not math problems. So Doom is an absolutely unbelievable card. Um, you saw how many decks it was a requirement for as we went through. Doom and Evolutionary is basically enough to get that deck going and off the ground. You'd like Wave. You'll live without Wave if you have to. Doom plus Evo equals deck, much like um, Dracula plus Modoc equals deck. And I guess, so there's not a single Shuri plus equals deck. It'd probably be Shuri plus Taskmaster if it was, but like, there's a lot to like here. Doom is the best six cost in the game. It's phenomenal. It's one of the worst five best cards in the game. Again, immediately after it got pumped back to making five power Doom bots, um, Play the deck, you won't be sad. All right. Hopefully that settled everyone on what to do with their free series three drop. Hopefully that was informative for anyone who watched this long. Thank you so much for watching. I, as always, super appreciate the support. Hopefully you hit that sub button, ring that bell, leave that comment, do all that kind of good stuff. I'll see you tomorrow with two new decks for another snap take. And then the afternoon video tomorrow is going to be, um, Oh, wait, sorry, that morning video is going to announce our winners for the season pass uh, or from the YouTube. And then the afternoon video tomorrow is going to be um, all of our Elsa Bloodstone season pass spotlight cash feature. Make sure you don't miss out. Peace.